Hey, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, November 11th, 2016. It is now 10.33 a.m., just turned 10.33 as I t uh, uh, start the video here. Uh, half an hour ago, I started this uh, video. I wanted to cover something that I noticed in gold, uh, relationship between gold and the, and the broad market. Um, it's just something worth monitoring, not anything major. And as I started that other video, that's when the Pandora price alert went off. So I stopped the video and got that one out because I figured that one would move quick based on the chart. So far, so good on that trade. It's up pretty nice uh, since breaking out, but uh, we'll see. All right. Yeah, this is what I wanted to cover. Uh, gold, as you, a lot of you know, is melting down. You know, I've... I've um, you know, we came in, and I made mention of a, a recent short trade on on the on the metals and, and the miners uh, on an unofficial trade. Then I covered that, said my my comfort level or my conviction wasn't that strong, but I did favor, and I have for a while more downside in gold, and um, that's what's happened. So really, the big picture here. You know, this is, you know, we were short, not, I forget where exactly where, and I shorted the miners officially on this site. So we had an official trade, and then a personally a couple trades that I've done, posted those in the trading room, as I often do, uh, especially quick trades that don't, I don't plan to be on for so long. Sometimes I'll post those as unofficial trades, but the bigger picture, which I've covered ad nauseum in recent months, is you had this divergent high in gold, pretty much a frenzy, uh, just a, a lopsided, one-sided, everybody bullish thinking gold and the miners to the moon. Uh, which which really you know uh, set the stage for a uh, you know pretty lasting top. I don't know if that'll be a permanent top. I really can't tell you. And I have to say, longer term, I'm I'm more bullish on gold with everything um, going on with the you know the the global stock markets. Most importantly, the central banks printing a lot of money. Uh, things of that nature. So we'll probably see a flight to safety gold. And as I've maintained all along, this would be, you know, I, I, I left this as a possibility. This was a target back here. 115.70 was a target back uh, on this divergent high when we shorted gold or the miners back here. And all along I said, you know, I had these different targets, support one, target one, support two, target two. And this would be my final target. Now what's happened in gold, bigger picture recently, you had a pretty well-defined uptrend line. And you can see gold broke down, and it was impulsive. It took that out. It took out this former support second target zone, which was really hit right here. You know, you can see that we went slightly past it. So that was already hit once. Now we've taken it out. That's bearish. That opens the door for a move down here, that 115.70 area I was talking about. Pretty bearish price action if you look down here on the... Um, PPO. Uh, sometimes I'll use the PPO in lieu of the MACD, but you guys know I'm a big fan. And it's not all. It's not perfect, but it does a good job. This 9 EMA. Uh, I don't know why that was uh, the wrong color there. Either way, the uh, 9 EMA has done a great job of. Um, defining trends and what happened is gold has crossed below and has remained below and more importantly I talk about this a lot that uh, you know using that 9 EMA the the signal line whether it's on the PPO or the MACD uh, not only is it good to help identify the intermediate term trend when it's above or below the zero line as it has been here but very often you get a back test that level the zero line acts as resistance when tested from below or support when tested from above as it did back here and you know you can do this in many cases this was a slight whipsaw uh, so there you know that's what I'm looking at here so we had a not only a bearish crossover I'll take get rid of those lines real quick you know bearish crossover was right here we see the PPO line crossing down and we also had a failure at the zero line that's not good that's a pretty bearish sign for gold we are getting close to oversold we're not there yet very close now we were recently oversold and um you know as i said the other day i have no interest to short gold in the miners here but i want to do uh do this video to really go over a relationship that I've noticed. Uh, so twofold, I wanted to point out the recent bearish developments. Gold's really getting pounded here uh, recently. And um, you can see on the 60-minute chart, I had this uptrend line. We, that's the same uptrend line on the daily. So we've broken below, and I don't see anything right now in the 60-minute charts that make me want to go long, other than some potential some potential divergence now the MACD or yeah in this case it's a MACD it's pointed straight down so this is what I call potential divergence it has the potential pardon the overuse of that word to become uh, confirmed divergence and to do that we would have to have the um, we'd have to have the MACD turn back up here and that hasn't happened yet so if the MACD can turn up before it makes a lower 
low, uh, as well as the RSI turn back up, you know, keeping that divergence in place. Uh, there's certainly the possibility for a trend reversal in gold. Those are the things I like to see after a powerful downtrend. I like to see at least bullish divergence on the 60 minute time frame, and that that may come. So again, uh, as bearish as this breakdown was, this could be a fake down. Sometimes you do, you know, you take out those previous reaction lows like we had right here. That was a previous reaction low. That just may be a flush out, wash out move. So I want to be very clear that I personally have no desire or interest to short gold. Although I see the possibility of move down to that 115.70 level, we may or may not get there. So let's just end it at that because this video really wasn't about gold so much as it is the relationship between gold in the um, in the broad market. So I need to type in SPY here. Let's just compare. Uh, so what we have is, if you look up in the corner, the SPY or the S&P 500 tracking ETF is in red, gold is in blue, and they're overlaid. This chart goes back two years. So what I wanted to do is just point out a couple of, uh, you know, what I've, what I've noticed in studying the charts today is a relationship you know i've uh, you know gold has been such a popular trade um really in the last few years and i always talk about there's a strong you know interrelationship between all financial markets stocks bonds all asset classes and although gold and equities have very little to do with each other you know this market one of the one of the traits in this market in recent years because we were at a bull market not so long ago at, at all-time highs uh, I think the Dow just made a new high, but the S&P and, and, and most importantly, the NASDAQ 100 hasn't recently. Um, at least it's off its highs now. But um, point being that I think the the gold and the stock market trade have gone hand in hand. I think you've had a lot of people with stocks going to new highs and then gold having a heck of a rally uh, earlier this year, even though we're well off those highs. I think... You know, and and looking at you know some of the record high margin interest balances, you know, the, with the uh, margin accounts, people extended. I think there's a lot of folks, and again, this is just my theory that have loaded up on both stocks and gold. Maybe gold was a hedge. Uh, either way, there's a relationship to be had here, and that's what I'm going to highlight. So what I'm doing with these circles is I'm circling the the uh, the peaks in gold again. GLD is in blue, and what I notice is shortly after gold peaks the stock market peaks. And let's draw some arrows here. So you have a correction in gold, then a correction in equities. Gold recovers, so does the stock market. Okay, so pretty pretty close correlation here, but I'm more concerned with these tops. Now, at this point, gold peaks, stock market peaks. Gold has a pretty hefty uh, drop. Gold really corrects pretty hard. The stock market shrugs it off, has a little drop down, Shrugged it off, and this is my point here, and I'm getting somewhere with this where we're at today. So gold ignored it, had a little correction uh, in the stock market, I should say. Started to fall down and said, ah, you know what, gold's gold, we're going to go up. No, what happened then? See this big correction gold? The stock market then played a violent game of catch-up, saying, uh-oh, something's wrong here. So what I attribute that to, and again, it's just a theory. Maybe my theory's wrong, but uh, this relationship certainly isn't, because I'm highlighting that as we go here, that you know the same folks that are loaded up to the gills with gold, uh, when they start getting margin calls, uh, or whatever the powers that be within the financial markets, that drop in gold has exacerbated a, you know, uh, a sell-off with a little bit of a lag time. So, you, so the point here, in the stock market, it does no good to, to look at things that have a direct you know, one-to-one -one relationship because there's no lead time. If you can identify something that uh, has, has, can give you an early signal or an early warning, that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. That is value added. Um, other than that, you know, there's some things like called concurrent uh, indicators, economic indicators that, that, that don't give you any future direction. They just tell you what's going on at the time. So, okay, so here we go. So we had the correction, the violent game of catch up, as I pointed there, uh, then everything normalized, gold rallied here. You see the blue lines in the stock market rallied. And remember the stock market can go up, you know, it, more than gold, at least in this scale, they're overlapped. Don't, don't look at the, don't look so much at the distance of the moves on each one. Just look at the direction of the move. So uh, we had a bottom in gold here. Let's see, they both rallied. And then at this point, again, let's, let's grab these little circles. Gold peaked right here on its rally. Stock market continued on a little further. Peaked there. 
Uh, gold started selling off pretty, pretty nice and uh, pretty straight down. The stock market did the same thing. It started following it down, said, ah, now we're, we're going to go up. Tried to make another high. White gold kept going, and that was it. Again, the bottom fell out. Gold, or I'm sorry, the stock market once again played a violent game of catch up. All right, so. Um, Okay, sorry, I had a brief distraction there with the phone ringing. All right, so here we go. Uh, everything both went up. They were moving together. And, and see, look at the correlation again between gold and the stock market just in recent years. So they both moved up. Everything was hunky-dory. And uh, here we go. So here's gold again. Let's fast forward. Gold peaks here. What happened? Just once again, the stock market followed. It didn't peak right away. Went up for a little bit longer. Uh, it was clear. Once it became clear that gold had peaked and was moving lower, the stock market then peaked. Gold continued lower, and the stock market followed gold. The relationship has been clear. And where do we come now? We come full circle. There's a huge disparity. You go back on this chart, you don't see a lot of this. The stock market in recent um, weeks here has had a near vertical rise, very sharp rally. That was the Trump pump there. And gold has fallen off uh, off a cliff, almost straight down. This is a alarming disparity. This was a pretty tight, I think I made a pretty good point of the relationship there, the relatively tight correlation, although gold has led. And so now what we see, gold dropping, stocks going up. Uh, there's going to be a, a reversion to the mean, unless this this you know tight relationship and this was going back two years it could probably go back farther and see it this to me is a warning sign and it says we're going to have a reversion to the mean that means either gold plays a violent game of catch up to the stock market maybe the stock market is finally taking the lead here um, but that hasn't been the case recently so gold is going down as it did before and all these examples the stock market so far has ignored that and uh, to me that's a red flag and um, you know you just have to Nothing is 100% trading. You just have to go with what the trend has been. And the trend has been that, uh, you know, when gold corrects and starts going down, once the trend becomes clear, especially if the stock market ignores it, the stock market plays a violent game of catch up to the downside. So let's watch gold. Maybe, as I said, I showed you there's some, you know, still a little downside left, that 115.70 level on gold. Uh, so if we go there, that means gold's going to continue down lower and the stock market's going to take the cue and uh, probably follow down and maybe play a pretty quick game of catch up. That's that's my preferred scenario right now. So I know this is busy, a lot of different lines. I could use a different chart, but I think the, the point was made. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. All right, I'll stop the video here. That keeps this one relatively short. So I just wanted to point out that that relationship for what it's worth. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.